It's in it with something much better. Trust that God will put the right people in your life at the right time and for the right seasons. God's plan is always the best. Sometimes the process is painful and hard. But don't forget that when God is silent, he's doing something for you. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 says this. Now, with this promises, I want you to remember that God will never take something away from you without the intention of replacing it with something much better. So whatever didn't work out for you as planned, this is God's own way of saying, I've got something much better. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 23 says, Be sensible and don't tell everything you know. When you walk with the Lord, He gives you visions. He gives you visions pertaining to your future, visions pertaining to your life. He gives you visions pertaining to the things He wants to accomplish with you and through you. He causes you to see into the future so you can head for that future. Everybody may not see what you see or know the future that God is guiding you into. But some people try to tell everybody what God is showing them. And at the end of it all, that's one big mistake you should not make. Yes, it's a big mistake, except he's the one leading you to talk about it. Understand that Satan doesn't know what you see until you tell him. He's not omnipresent. He doesn't know everything. And when he hears about what you see, then he starts scheming how to work out a plan to stop you. There are people who, because they couldn't keep certain things to themselves, they lost the beautiful idea they received from the Spirit. And once they got the idea for something, they started telling people about it. And Satan got wind of it. And guess what he did? He devised the means. Don't ever give him that chance. If there's one thing I've learned to accept, is that people come and people go. Friends you may have made in the past may no longer be around. People you expected to stick around may have left you. And you ask God why? Forget this. We serve an orderly God. He doesn't just allow things to happen because he always seeks the best interest of his creation and he allows things to happen for a reason. So here are five reasons why God may remove a certain person from your life. The first one could be to fulfill his divine plan. God's ultimate plan is that we live forever with him in his kingdom. And when we give our lives to God, we're giving him permission to do his will in our lives. Therefore, anything or anyone that comes in the way of fulfilling God's plan in your life, he will remove. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, thoughts to give you an expected end. The second one could be, they may be toxic. There are many toxic people in this world, and you may encounter some of these people every day and not even know it. They may secretly hate you or become more and more toxic as time goes by. We can only see what people allow us to see, but God sees the heart. He sees all of the secret thoughts and conversations that others may have about us. God knows exactly how much we can bear. Therefore, he may remove someone from your life in order to protect you. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 says, For the Lord seeth not as man seeth heart. The third reason may be that this person is needed somewhere else. Now God may remove someone from your life because that person is needed elsewhere. Now this may be a very difficult thing to understand, especially if that person was a good friend or a romantic partner. Remember, God has a plan for everyone's life, including that person. God's plan might take them away from you, but understand that everything happens for a reason. They may need to fulfill their God-given purpose elsewhere. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. The fourth reason, they may not be right for you. Oh, and I can relate to this. 
So wise, Sometimes, are you not right for me? Don't remove someone from your life because he or she isn't right for you or the timing isn't just right. God may decide to unite the both of you in the future or he may not. God sees the beginning and the end. We may question why God will allow a perfect man or woman to walk out of our lives, but God knows us and he will only allow things to happen in our lives that are in accordance with his plan. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. And the fifth reason, God has better things in store and he wants to bless you. Sometimes we hold on to things thinking that this is the best life has to offer. We have no idea what God has in store for us. We sincerely do not have an idea what he has in store. And he's just waiting for us to trust him so we can pour out those blessings. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And when we place our lives in God's hands, we can rest assured that he's protecting us. And even when we choose to do the opposite of God's will, he's always trying to get us back on the right track. He loves us too much and he doesn't want to lose us. We're that precious to God. And when we understand that everything happens for a reason, it is easier to learn lessons from my experiences. For example, that person may have left because of something you said. Now you can learn to better control your tongue. That person may have left because of what you probably did to him. And now you're going to learn how to control yourself or how to respond better to people rather than react. So when God removes someone from your life, don't chase after them. I want you to see it as a blessing in disguise because we might not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. So we need to trust God and trust that everything that happens Everyone that walks in or out of our lives is for a reason. And when they do leave, remember that they just played their role for a season. Remember that they were there for a season. And know the reason why they are there. Because not everyone deserves to be held on to. Not everyone deserves to be attached to. So that's a very important thing. We need to know the place of people in our lives and we need to treat them accordingly. They are friends for a season. They are friends for a season. They are friends for a lifetime. There are acquaintances. There are people that are there to play different roles. But the only problem is that we get them mixed up. So in this short walk in life, we need to know the kind of people we meet and we need to classify them accordingly. And when we place ourselves in God's hand, we can be rest assured that he's protecting us. You know, even when we do the opposite of his will, even when we go against his will, even when we're trying to like fight all hard, even when we're trying to fight and say, no, I don't want to lose this person. I don't want to lose him. I don't want to lose her. I don't want a case whereby I'll have to put myself out there again. Probably you're struggling from a heartbreak. Probably you're going through a divorce. You're asking yourself, how can I put myself out there? How can I find someone else that's like him? How can I find someone else that's like her? How can I find someone else that could understand me the way this person understood me? Well, I have good news for you. There's not just one person for you. For every one person that leaves, God has a thousand people to bless you. God has a thousand people to uplift you. God has a thousand people to strengthen you. God is our ever-present help. And he shows that through the kind of people he sends to you. So what do we have to do? We have to be conscious. And we also have to be cautious. We have to be conscious and we have to be cautious of the kind of people that are in our lives. And if for any reason they finally decide to leave, just know that their part is done. Don't fight it. Just smile because it happened. So I leave you with these words. 
know the different kinds of people that are coming into your life. Categorize them and treat them accordingly. And you'll be glad you did. God bless you. God bless you. This is a morning devotional, you understand? I get praise to God in the morning, you understand? When you keep fucking with me, or messing with me, and messing with my religion, and what I believe in my faith, you're gonna get some uh, backlash, you know? So don't blame me. I told you, don't mess with me like that. Don't mess with my God. He's not going to be happy with that. You guys don't think God is real? That's on you. Okay? God is real to me. You understand? Stop fucking with me. Okay? When I say God's angry, he's angry. You're messing with the wrong person. You understand? Don't do it. Don't do it. Bam. 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 You understand? Sharpshooter? Sharpshooter. You understand? I fucking see everything. You understand? I'm a marksman. Expert marksman. You understand? I see everything. I see the lady over there on the stroller with the doggy. I saw the car go by. I see every person in this community. Every movement. I can see way in the distance over there next to the fucking kids park. Next to the playground. I see them playing. I see the lady walking with the pink shirt. I see the corner way over there with the lady with the stroller. Way over there. I see the lady way over there. I can see Holly and Francesca. And trust me, I know where my neighbors live, okay? Remember, I'm not threatening anybody. I'm just keeping watch, okay? <laughs> I happen to have a lot of skill sets that I'm using for free. I see that lady walking right there. The other one coming right there. Shot. Bam, 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 bam. Headshot? No. This isn't a game. Okay? This isn't Call of Duty or in one of those freaking things where you do a headshot. Bam, bam, bam. No. Rocket launcher. Boom. Dead. No, this isn't a game like that, is it? This is real life. Center line headshot. Now the target. Now the target, people. I will never hurt kids or parents or family. You understand? I don't do stuff like that. I don't assault people for no reason, Holly. I respect my community and my neighbors. But when I'm being disrespected the way you disrespected me, I'm not going to sit there and take it. And who the fuck was that guy with the dog? None of your fucking business guy. Why are you telling me not to talk to staff that way? Huh? The fuck is that any of your fucking problem? I went to go talk to her myself. And that bitch refused to answer my fucking questions. Holly, I confronted you directly, and you would not answer my fucking question to me, would you? Hmm. 
I have yet to make a phone call. As I said, I don't need to. Not yet, anyway. Bam. Do you understand my hand-eye reflexes and coordination are beyond normal? Do you realize I can do things most people cannot do? Because I'm a fucking grandmaster? Just because I'm not showing you all of my skills doesn't mean I don't have them. I've been here every damn day since coming back from Florida. I've not strayed anywhere. I've been home, watching, taking care of my wife, getting my house ready for my unborn son, who's due June 14 or 15, and my crazy dumbass wife wants to get rid of me and throw me away? Huh. Why do you think that is? Chinese fucking family? Hmm? Why you guys keep doing that to me? I begged and pleaded you, did I not? Gerald, I sent you video links and video links about you and your daughter. And yet you guys just keep ignoring me, keep lying to me, keep scheming together. But let me tell you, I trust in God, okay? And I don't give a damn about you or your family. I've spoken to my family and they support me. Do you understand? I don't give a damn about you guys. Not after you guys all disown me, throw me away, your own fucking daughter calling cops on me to have me arrested for 13 days put me in a psych ward you think I'm gonna stand for that shit you fucking piece of shit Wang family fuck you China for fucking doing that to fucking your people and I'm sorry Lord please forgive me for all known and unknown sins I need you, Father. World may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul. I will never let you go Taking me From the mighty clay Set my feet upon a rock Now I know I love you I need you Though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my precious friend, I will worship you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus. I will never let you go You've taken me From the miry clay Set my feet upon the rock Now I know I love you I need you You hear this, Tustin police officers? Who am I giving praise to? My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. I love you, I need you, though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Lord, Savior.
my song. Understand? I wrote this song over 20 years ago. Okay? Over 20 years ago. Should be there for my king. Cause he is the way, the truth, and the light that sets me apart from the rest. I know. Hello, Angela, my neighbor and doggies. This is my Korean neighbor, Hangukpun. Her name is Angela, too. Angela Hong. Hong Shi. Why should I be afraid of anything in this life? Hmm? Why, should I be Why should I be afraid of what? Hmm? What can hurt me? What can destroy me? Nothing, right? Nothing. Don't fuck with my neighbors. Understand? I keep watch of this area. I keep watch of this community in the Veterans Park and my neighbors and my family and friends. Understand? I love this country. I love my God from the Bible, the Holy Bible, the King James Version. I am a Baptist. I was a praise leader. I went to mission trips to China, to Indian reservations. Do you people think the freedoms that we have in America? Why you guys take that for granted? We have this thing called the Constitution. And the Ten Amendments? The Bill of Rights? First Constitutional Amendment is what? Freedom of speech, religion, and the press? So when I go around speaking my mind, sharing God openly to my neighbors, why do you have a problem with that? Do you guys not understand our constitutional amendment? These are the laws of the land. Do you understand? Our founding fathers put this together. So what exactly is your issue in America? Have you ever lived in other countries? Have you been to another fucking country? Do you know that we don't have those rights there like in Korea? Korea's laws are all fucked up. You understand? I lived there for 10 fucking years. So don't fucking tell me you know better than me. Have you been to other countries like the Philippines, Thailand, Japan, China? Do you know what it's like over there? Vietnam, Cambodia? Huh? These third world fucking countries that rely on the sex industry and tourism? Are you fucking kidding me? You have any idea what kind of shit happens in Asia? Asia sex tours? Give me a break. Okay? Someone like Gerald Wing. Huh? Businessman. You know how many women? <laughs> Anyways, that's on him. I don't give a fuck. That's his own demons. Diane Wing. Always wanted to go to Vegas. Fucking gambling. Mama. Huh? Last time I took Angela to Red Rock, you're like, why didn't we take you with us to Vegas? Because I didn't go there to gamble. I went there to go see Red Rock. You just want to go to Morongo and Pachanga for the free stuff, gambling every damn day, every time you get a chance to, while Gerald goes around with all this nonsense, hmm? claiming to be some big man in the hotel industry. Yeah, I don't see any power there other than the disrespect that you keep giving me. And my family, the same family that you guys have not even met yet. You haven't even met my parents or my brother. Yet you guys disown me and throw me away like trash. I've been warning you, warming you up to my family, sharing with you who the fuck I am and who my family is. 
And you guys want to throw me away, you Chinese bastards? I have Korean neighbors who understand me. You see this? Angela right there, my neighbor, and my other neighbor who lives in the corner. Does it look like they're afraid of me? Or do they feel safe with me being here? Do you see any neighbors running from me? Or just walking by my house, checking everything out, being friendly? And my wife keeps calling me sick, keeps trying to drug me up, and I refuse. I will not be taking fucking harmful drugs that fuck up my body. You understand, wife? I haven't told you. Every fucking day. Was I lying when I couldn't even drive a car or sleep or even get in a comfortable position? Huh? Was that lying to you? Yet you want to keep dosing me up? Calling me an asshole? I don't think so. Think again.